here we have the new improved table. It doesn't look a lot different from the other one that you saw, but this one is it's a lot different underneath. It has the arms in the middle versus on the bottom. It has more than twice as many rollers underneath and different rollers and a ring on the side to support it. So it's much more solid. I mean, I can put weight on it. There's anyway, lots of different rollers there. These ones here are quite solid. These, these are the main ones underneath. And if we spin it, we get the same motion out and up. Back in a little bit to lock. You can see these here. A little bit of flex, but quite solid. That's just me moving it back and forth. But, but vertically, they're quite solid, and that's independently. When they all come together, they're locked in, and even adds yeah, more. So that's it. Still no center mechanism yet. Waiting on parts in the mail. I've started working on these top panels here for the table. And what we have here is my sort of initial pattern. And the issue that I'm having is that getting a right angle isn't actually that hard to get to get pretty accurate. I have this framing square here, which I've checked for squareness by drawing some lines and checking that everything lines up. So I know it, it seems to be pretty well on, even though it's seen some use. So I went ahead and made my quarter circle. Well, so the issue is that the the square part isn't too difficult, but getting a nice reference arc for my bit to ride along, I'm going to use a, sort I don't know what you call it. Uh, where did my router bit go? Oh, it's over here one of these bits and what this does is it rides along a pattern at the top and then cuts everything away so that it matches that pattern it follows what's it called a flush trim bit there we go so I need something for it to ride along it's gonna be a nice smooth arc at the size that I want but I don't have a way of cutting a really nice smooth piece for that with my jigsaw even if I had a bandsaw I just wouldn't be able to do it myself. So I use my circle machine, which is what this is. It's a screw and a pencil. And it's on a piece of ground wire that I snagged from somewhere. And so you screw this into here. And I use wire instead of string or rope because it doesn't stretch. Or if it does stretch, the amount is negligible to my level. Uh, accuracy level at the moment. So we do that. Steel cord would probably work well too, but it doesn't hold the shape. And I had this on hand. So I made my arc there and I made it a little bit smaller than what I want. I want a 24 inch uh, radius on this. I made it a little bit smaller and then I put this strip of poplar, I think it's poplar, that I cut and I cut it thin enough that it's flexible and so that sort of floats over the spots where my arc wasn't, wasn't perfect with my jigsaw. And I attach that here with some of my favorite GRK cabinet screws. They have a washer head on them, which makes it nice. And so it goes along, and I screwed in this side, only to discover that it wasn't tight enough. Because it just, just a tiny little bit this way here makes a big difference as far as the tightness on the rest of it. So then what I did was I cut a slot here. Okay. And then I put in my adjustable screws for also from... That are GRK. These are for doors and what that does is that allows me to crank this gap wider and pull this tight. And as you can see I barely need to make it any wider. So what those screws do is they look like this and you screw them in with a special bit. Come on. 
doesn't appear to be cooperating. There we go. So it goes on like this. It screws them in. Both parts screw the same at the same time. But really, they're independent. If I hold this one still, I can rotate this part. Okay? And so this piece here screws both of them at the same time in. And when I want to adjust the inner one, I take this outer housing off. And now I can thread just the inside while the outside stays the same. So I'm able to open this gap up just a tiny bit, pull this tight, and now as long as I don't press too hard, I might put some glue and wait till the morning or something to keep that from happening. But now I've got a nice smooth arc and it needs to be really smooth because that flush trim bit will, <laughs> it'll translate every little bump and wiggle into your piece. So that's how I'm gonna get my my curve, and then from there I can cut it off and start working on getting that piece. That first pattern's gotta be just right, so I expect this is gonna take a while. Here's my double check that I did on the alignment of my piece, of my, my pattern piece. So we started off with this piece here. And you can see I got my, my strip that went around it to give me the nice smooth edge. So we attached that and routed it, which allowed us to create that piece down there, which has a nice, a nice edge, very smooth. And then I very carefully made these edges so that they would be right angles to one another as, as carefully as I could. Those were also routed, but the original marking was done with that construction square. So then I took that piece and I held it on top of Tyvek. I used Tyvek instead of paper because it sits flat and I had an extra roll, even though I know it's a lot more expensive than paper. And I traced it out with a knife <clears throat> by just slicing around the bottom four times to produce this circle here and it came out very very nicely you can see that so i did this these pieces together first and these two together first and then we joined it we joined it here and you can see that the gap is quite small that right there has has no gap virtually a couple spots like here the tape's actually holding it apart well or i guess the tape is simply reflecting the way it was sitting, but we did no gap here, no gap there to stick them together. And you can see in the center here, it really, it gets only to about three thousandths of an inch, uh, three hundredths of an inch gap. That's what three hundredths of an inch looks like. I lined up my calipers, and I guess here, uh, maybe four. But either way, that's pretty good for a first try. Quite pleased with that. If we flatten it down, this paper curling up is distorting it slightly, but pretty close. And I think some of this misalignment may do, be due to the, just the board that I used to route against, maybe flexing a little bit or just being slightly out of alignment. I might use a piece of steel or aluminum next time. So that's it. Tomorrow we get big sheets and glue them up and get ready to 
cut some panels out to sit on our table. It's already acting as a table, covered with stuff.